One of the primary reasons that I use NeoVim as my main code editor is that I can customize it exactly the way I like so that it can fit my specific needs as a developer and I can enjoy using it as much as possible. Plugins are a really important part of that. Recently, after some recommendations from you guys, I decided to give the lazy.envim plugin manager a try and it's been pretty amazing. It's allowed me to simplify my config and make plugin management easier, whilst also improving startup times and also making my setup more efficient through features like lazy loading plugins. In this video, I'm gonna share with you everything you need to know to get up and running with lazy.envim and how I like to go about setting up and organizing my plugins in a nice, scalable, and simple way. Along with this video, I'll have a link in the description to my entire current NeoVim config. This won't be specifically a migration guide from Packer to Lazy. If your setup is based off of my Packer setup or you're looking to migrate from Packer to Lazy, this video should still be really helpful for that migration. And I'd recommend you make a copy of your config and start modifying that to migrate from Packer to Lazy. All right, with that said, let's get started. All right, so the first thing I wanna do here is open up a pretty basic and empty NeoVim config that doesn't have any plugins installed. If you're on a MacBook or a Linux machine, your NeoVim config should be located in the home directory under .config slash nvim. If you're on a Windows machine, it would be also in your home folder under app data slash local slash nvim. So to open up my NeoVim config, I'm gonna move into .config slash nvim, and then I'm gonna open it up with nvim dot and enter. That'll open up netrw, which is the built-in NeoVim file explorer. If I go to this primary init.lua file down here and press enter, that's what NeoVim will run whenever it starts up. All right, so now we're ready to start adding some plugins to this configuration. Now, the first thing we wanna do is to bootstrap lazy so that NeoVim installs it whenever it starts up if it isn't already installed. This is very similar to how you would bootstrap Packer and what some of you might've seen in my original NeoVim setup video. So I'm just gonna add this file by running colon edit and I'm gonna do lua slash hosian slash lazy dot lua. That will add the file to our config. Let's save it with colon W and enter. Now let's open up the file explorer again with colon explore. And you'll see here that now we have the lazy.lua file under lua slash hosia. All right, let's open it up again with enter. So to bootstrap lazy, I'm gonna use the following code. You'll be able to find this code in the lazy.nvim repository or in my personal config. I'll have both of those linked in the description. All right, let's save this with colon W and enter. And then after bootstrapping lazy, we want to require it with require lazy, and then we wanna call its setup function and then pass a table to it. Let's save this with colon W. Now we need to load this module in our main init.lua file. So I'm gonna open up the file explorer with colon explore. And I'm gonna go down here to init.lua. I'm gonna add require and then hosian.lazy and close that. Now I'm gonna to write to this file. I'm gonna quit NeoVim with colon Q and enter, and I'm gonna open it up again. And now you'll see if I do colon lazy, that'll open up the lazy UI. This is really nice for managing your plugins. It's very similar to how Mason works. As we go through this video, I'll show you guys some of the things you can do with this. Let's press Q to close it. I know the colors look pretty bad. We're gonna be adding a color scheme in a second. So let's close it with Q. And now to check that everything is working properly with lazy.envim, you should do colon check health lazy and enter and you'll see here that everything looks good. If you're migrating from Packer to Lazy, you might see some errors here. You're gonna have to delete the Packer compiled.lua file and also the plugins that Packer has installed. I'll have the commands you need to delete those in the description. All right, let's close this with colon Q and enter. And let's go back to the lazy.lua file, go down 13 lines and then go to this table. I'm going to expand this. And in here, you can list out all of the plugins that you want Lazy to install. This can either be a short plugin URL. So for example, for my preferred color scheme, this would look like the following. These URLs basically point to a repository. The first part of it is who it belongs to. And the following part is what the repository name is. If you need to configure a given plugin further, instead of just using a string like this, you would have to convert it into a table. So I'm going to surround this with curly braces. And then you can start adding properties to this table 
to configure your plugin. For a list of all of the properties you can use here for configuring a plugin, you can take a look at the lazy.nvim repository, or you can open the lazy.nvim help page within NeoVim. So I'm gonna save this file with colon W and enter, and then I'm gonna do colon and H followed by lazy.nvim. This will open up the lazy.nvim help. And to take a look at all of the options you can use for a plugin, you can go down here to plugin spec, and then you wanna put your cursor over this blue text. And then to jump to this particular section of the help, you can do control and closing bracket. And then in here, you can take a look at all of the properties you can assign to a plugin spec. Let's close this with colon Q and enter. For setting up this color scheme, I set the priority to a thousand because I want this plugin to load before all of my other plugins. And then you'll also see this config function. You'll see this a lot as we go through this video. The config function for a plugin will run whenever that plugin loads. So whenever this color scheme loads, which is before all of my other plugins with this priority set to a thousand, this config function will also run and then I'll use vim.cmd to set the color scheme to Nightfly. Note that the priority of plugins by default is 50. Lazy.nvim is also great for lazy loading plugins. This means that the plugin will load only when you need it. By default, plugins won't do lazy loading and they'll load whenever NeoVim starts. If you want to lazy load a plugin, you would do lazy equals true, or you could use events, commands, or key maps that will trigger a plugin to load. I'll show you some more examples of this as we go through this video and it will become clear. I just noticed this is supposed to be Greek color, so I'm gonna fix that. And then let's save this file with colon W. And now what we wanna do is quit NeoVim, so I'm gonna do colon Q and enter. I'm gonna open it up again with nvim dot, and you'll see here that Lazy automatically notices that we have a plugin missing. It'll install it and then it'll load it, which will run the config function and set the color scheme to Nightfly. Pretty awesome. This approach of doing it works fine, but I think there's a much better way of structuring your plugins with Lazy. And I think it's one of the primary benefits of switching to this plugin manager. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that now. So let's close this Lazy UI with Q. I'm gonna exit out of NeoVim with colon Q and enter. I'm gonna create a new directory with make directory Lua slash Hossian slash plugins and a new file with lua slash ocean slash plugins slash color scheme dot lua. Let's open up NeoVim again. You'll see here that under the Lua folder and under Hosian, we'll have a plugins folder and in there a color scheme dot Lua file. In here, I wanna return a table that will have the information for our color scheme plugin. This is essentially the same code you saw earlier, which is the short plugin URL, the priority and the config function. Let's save this file. And now we need to edit our lazy dot Lua file. So I'm gonna open up the file explorer go down here to lazy, go down here, and I'm gonna delete everything between the parentheses, so EI parentheses, and then I'm gonna change this to hosian.plugins. Essentially, this is the name of the Lua module we just created with the plugins directory. Inside of that directory, we'll have files for all of the plugins that we want to install with Lazy. Let's save this file with colon W. To make sure this works properly because I can't source this file, I'm gonna quit NeoVim, I'm gonna open it up again, and I'm gonna add another plugin for navigating NeoVim easier with NVim tree. I'm gonna do colon edit Lua slash Hosian slash plugins slash NVim dash tree dot Lua. I'm gonna save this file with colon W. And you'll see now one of the benefits of this approach. When we configure lazy like this, whenever we make a change to anything under the plugins folder, it'll recognize the change and it'll reload lazy so that it can update its UI. Let's press enter here. Now I also need to return a Lua table here, same as with the color scheme. Now I'm gonna add the short plugin URL for NVim tree. Now I wanna specify dependencies with a table. I want to install NVim web dev icons along with NVim tree. The dependencies property will basically tell Lazy to install any missing dependencies. And it also tells Lazy to load these dependencies whenever NVim tree loads. Whether that be when NVim starts up, if there's no Lazy loading, or later on if the plugin does use Lazy loading. Next, we wanna have the config function. 
and I'm gonna add the following code within it. Let's go back up here. This is basically the same code that I was using in my previous setup for configuring NVIM tree. You'll also notice that when requiring NVIM tree, there's no need to use a protected call as we already know that the plugin will be installed. Again, the config function will only run whenever NVIM tree loads. You'll also notice here at the bottom, I've moved my key maps to this config function so that they're only set when NVIM is available and loads. Let's save this file with colon W. You'll see that lazy recognizes a change. Let's press enter. Now let's open the lazy UI with colon lazy. You'll see that it recognizes that MM tree and the dev icons haven't been installed. So to install them, we have to press capital I and that'll automatically install them. Let's close the UI with Q. And now to manually load the NVIM tree plugin without exiting NeoVim, we can do colon lazy load and then NVIM dash tree dot Lua. That will load the plugin. And now we can use the key maps we configured in the config function. So I'm gonna do leader EE and that'll open up NVIM tree. Another thing I wanna show you guys is that within the plugins folder, you can add an init dot Lua file. I'm gonna go here to plugins I'm gonna press A to add a new file, and I'm gonna type out init.lua here and press enter. And I'm gonna press enter to open this init.lua file. And here we also wanna return a Lua table. And I like using this file to add any plugins that don't need any extra configuration. So for example, I like using Vim Tmux Navigator for navigating between Tmux and NeoVim splits. So I'm gonna add it here. This is just the short plugin URL for that plugin. I'm gonna save this file. Lazy will reload. I can open it with Lazy. I can press capital I to install it. Press Q to close. I'm gonna close the file explorer with space EE. I'm gonna manually load the navigator plugin with colon lazy load vim tmux navigator. And now I can use it. So I'm gonna split the window with space SV, and I can use control H and control L to navigate between these splits. Note that I'm just manually loading the plugin because I don't wanna quit and re-enter NeoVim. All of the plugins that we've configured so far don't use lazy loading, so they'll just load whenever NeoVim starts. I'm gonna close this split with my key map, which is space SX. And now I wanna show you guys an example of configuring a plugin that will make use of lazy loading to add some efficiency to our configuration. So I'm gonna open up the NVIM tree file explorer with space EE. I'm gonna to go to plugins here and press A, and then I'm gonna add nvim-cmp.lua. I'm gonna use this file configuring nvim cmp, which is used for auto completion in NeoVim. Let's open it up with enter. I'm gonna do return and a Lua table here. I'm gonna close the file explorer with leader EE. And again here, I'm going to add the following code. This first part is just the NVIM CMP plugin. And you'll see a new property here called event, which tells Lazy that we want to load NVIM CMP on a particular NeoVim event. In this case, it's insert enter. To show you guys some more information about this event, you can do colon H and insert enter. You'll see here that this event is triggered just before starting insert mode. So because auto completion is only necessary when we're in insert mode, it makes sense to lazy load this plugin whenever we go into insert mode. Let's close this by doing colon Q. You can take a look at all of the NeoVim events you have available with colon H and events. And you'll see a list here of all of the events you can use for lazy loading. Let's close this with colon Q and enter. Now we have a list of dependencies here for NVIM CMP. These include completion sources and plugins for setting up snippets. And now again, we have a config function here, which will load NVIM CMP and some of the dependencies and configure auto completion. Again, this code is very similar to my original Packer setup if you've followed along with me in the past. Okay, to show you how this works, I'm gonna save this file and I'm gonna open lazy. You'll see that it shows NVIM CMP as a dependency for all of these uh, plugins that we have listed as dependencies. And you'll see here that NVIM CMP will only load when we go into insert mode. Let's press capital I to install all of these plugins. If you don't do this, then whenever you exit NeoVim and go back in, Lazy will automatically install these missing plugins. Let's close this Lazy UI with Q, and then let's exit NeoVim with colon Q. 
to show you guys how the lazy loading works. Let's open up NeoVim again with nvim dot and let's open the lazy UI with colon lazy. You'll see here that nvim tree, the dev icons, the color scheme and Vim Tmux Navigator have all been loaded already, but NVim CMP along with all of its dependencies haven't been loaded yet because we haven't gotten into insert mode. Let's press this UI with Q and then I'm gonna go to a buffer here. So let's go into Lua, Hosean. Let's go back to NVim CMP. Let's close the Explorer with space EE. And then I'm gonna go into insert mode with I. I'm gonna go back out of insert mode with escape and then I'm gonna open the lazy UI again. And now you'll see that NVIM CMP along with all of its dependencies have been loaded as we've already gone into insert mode. And that's essentially the lazy loading at work, which makes our config a lot more efficient and plugins load only when they're necessary. Let's close the UI. You'll see here that if I go into insert mode here and I start typing, I'll get some recommendations for text and snippets, which is what we want with NVIM CMP. Awesome. All right, now I wanna show you guys another example of a plugin that will make use of lazy loading. Let's open the file explorer, go to plugins here and press A to add a new file. This one will be called comment.lua, which will help us install a plugin for commenting out lines of code. I'm gonna return a Lua table and I'm gonna add the following here. So we have the short plugin URL and we have a table with events. These events mean that this plugin should only load right before a buffer opens for an already existing file or when a new file is created and a buffer is opened. This works great in this case because we only need the commenting plugin whenever we're working in a buffer. You'll also notice that config here is equal to true instead of a function. If you do this, then lazy will automatically require comment and call its setup function. If you only need to require the plugin and call its setup function, instead of running any other extra code, then you can take this approach. All right, let's save this file. Now let's do colon lazy, capital I to install the comment plugin. Once that's done, let's close the UI. Let's quit NeoVim, open it up again. I'm gonna open the UI again, and you'll see here that the comment plugin hasn't been loaded and it says that it needs a buff read pre or buff new file event to load. So let's open up a buffer here. Let's go back to this comment.lua file, press enter. And now if I open up the UI, you'll see that it's now loaded. Awesome. Now another nice use case of lazy loading is loading a plugin only when certain key maps are executed. To show you this, let's open up the file explorer. Let's add another file here called bin maximizer.lua. Let's open it up. Now I'm gonna add the following. Here we have the short plugin URL for bin maximizer. And now we have a table here assigned to a property called keys. And inside we have another table which has the key map and then what should execute. So whenever we do leader SM, it'll execute maximizer toggle. Essentially this plugin is used to maximize a NeoVim split and we only need it when we actually execute that key map. All right, to show you this, I'm gonna press escape, save, open up lazy. I'm gonna install the plugin. I'm gonna quit NeoVim, open it up again, open up the UI, and you'll see here that it hasn't been loaded yet and it's waiting for that key map of leader SM. Let's close the UI with Q. Let's open up that file again. So let's go to Vim Maximizer, close the file explorer, create a split. And now if I do leader SM, it'll load it and execute the command. If I open up the lazy UI, you'll see here that Vim Maximizer is loaded. Awesome, let's close the UI with Q. And let's close the split with leader SX. All right, to give you guys another example, let's open up the file explorer, add another file here. Let's call it bufferline.lua to add a nice buffer line to NeoVim. This is a plugin that I recently added to my config. I'm gonna add the following here. You'll see here that we have the short plugin URL, a dependencies table with dev icons, we wanna make sure that we install this specific version of Bufferline. And then an important difference here is this ops property, which basically tells lazy to run require bufferline.setup and pass that 
ops table to the setup function. So instead of assigning a function to config, if you just need to call setup with a particular set of options, you can use this ops property. Let's save this file with colon W, open up lazy, press capital I to install it. I also wanna show you guys some other things you can do with the lazy UI here. You can use capital U to install some updates. As you see here, lazy.nvim has some updates available. So if I do capital U, it'll update lazy.nvim. If you do X, it'll remove any plugins that you've removed from your config. And if you do capital S, it'll run install, update, and clean. There are some other commands you can use here to see them all. You can type out question mark and then you can go through this and see all of the options you have for what you can do with the lazy UI. Let's close it with Q. To manually load this plugin, I'm gonna do lazy load and then press tab and you'll see here bufferline.nvim and that'll load the plugin which you can see at the top here. Now let's open the file explorer and let's say that you want to add a subdirectory under plugins. So let's say you wanted to configure all of your LSP related plugins in a folder under plugins. So let's add that folder here with LSP slash and then let's say here you're adding LSP config.lua which will return a table. I'm not gonna be configuring this right now. You can see my LSP configuration in my repository and I'm considering making an updated video on configuring NeoVim LSP and everything you should know to do this yourself. Let me know in the comment section if you're interested in seeing that. So what I wanna show you guys with this is that Lazy won't automatically load this subdirectory. So we need to go to this lazy.lua file and then let's close the file explorer with leader EE. And I'm gonna to go to the end of this line. Now we need to change this string to a table. So I'm going to surround it with curly braces. Let's do this here. And now we need to change this to a table as well. And it's gonna have an import property equal to hosean.plugins. And then to add another one, which is the LSP directory, we're gonna do import equals ocean.plugins.lsp. Awesome, let's save that. Now I also wanna add some configuration options to Lazy. So I'm gonna add another table here as a second parameter. And inside of here, I'm gonna add the following. Essentially what this means is that for this install property, I want Lazy to try to load the Nightfly color scheme whenever it's gonna install some new plugins on startup. I do want Lazy to check for plugin updates, so I'm gonna keep this enabled by setting it to true, but I don't want it to automatically notify me of these updates when I start up NeoVim. I also wanna keep change detection enabled, which is enabled by default. That's the message you've seen whenever we make a change to a file and Lazy notices a change to the config, but I want Lazy to stop notifying me every time I make a change to the config. So that's why notify is set to false. So because I have Lazy checking for updates, but I don't want it to notify me. I'm gonna show you guys how to add the Lua line plugin for a nicer status line in NeoVim and add support to Lua line to let us know how many plugins are pending updates. So let's save this file. I'm gonna open up the file explorer. I'm gonna add here a file called lualine.lua. I'm gonna open it up and I'm gonna add the following. Let's go back up. You'll see here that I have the short plugin URL. I want dev icons to load with this plugin. And then in the config function, I'm loading Lua line and I'm also loading this lazy.status module. Then here I'm defining some colors for a custom Lua line theme. I'm defining a variable that contains the custom theme. And then here I'm calling the Lua line.setup function. I'm setting the custom theme I've defined above. And then I'm configuring a Lua line section. The Lua line section is Lua line underscore X. And I want that to show lazy underscore status dot updates, which is the number of plugins that have pending updates. And I want that to only show if there are updates pending. I also set a custom color for it. This is orange. Let's save this. Let's open up the lazy UI. Let's type out capital I. Awesome, let's close the UI with Q. Let's load the Lua line plugin with colon lazy load Lua line. 
Nvim. And now you'll see in the bottom that we have a really nice status line. Right now I don't have any updates pending. That's why you don't see the number of pending updates in the status line. But I'm gonna show you on the screen what it would look like if there were some updates pending. All right, you guys, so that's pretty much it for this video. That's everything I think you should know if you wanna get started with installing plugins and configuring NeoVim with lazy.nvim. As you can see, it's a pretty straightforward and really nice way of setting up NeoVim that also adds some really nice efficiencies to your setup. Some of you have been asking me about NullLS getting archived. I haven't looked into changing NullLS yet as it's still working fine for me, but I am considering looking into formatter.nvim and nvim lint for formatting and linting in NeoVim if I want to replace NullLS. Let me know in the comments section if you'd like to see a video on that. Even though this wasn't an entire walkthrough of my NeoVim setup, I will be updating the repo with my current NeoVim config and I'll leave a branch open with the Packer config for those of you that still need it for reference. I really hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, don't forget to leave a like down below. Let me know in the comments section if you have any questions or feedback for me. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to see more content like this from me. See you guys in the next one. Peace.